So today we are double cropping soybeans into wheat stubble with a John Deere air seeder with an air cart. This is a system we like. We've seen over many years that narrower rows dual crop beans, such as seven and a half inch spacing, which is what we're using here, out yields the 15 inch rows, okay? Uh, you don't have the luxury of swath control on these older drills, you do on the new ones, so that's a factor too, but we have found that the later you plant soya beans, especially later June or early July, then the narrower rows canopy faster and yield better side by side alongside properly equipped 15 inch row planters. Early, it doesn't make a difference at all. 30 inch rows do good if you're planting early, but the later we plant, the more of a benefit there is planting double crop beans to the narrower rows. So a few important factors just to think about. Number one, make sure you harvest the wheat as high as possible while getting all the grain and the heads, obviously. The taller you can harvest the residue, the less of an opportunity your combine has to screw up the residue distribution. Meaning the lower you cut it, the combine has to intake all that residue and it gives it more of an opportunity to screw up the residue management and that's pretty important when no-tilling. This is no-till wheat. We're no-tilling beans into the wheat stubble, as you can see and the wheat was no-tilled into corn stalks. So residue management gets to be really important. I often see guys spending five or $600,000 on a combine and they'll spend five or $8,000 on a luxury cab option with refrigerator and leather seats, but they don't buy the good choppers and spreaders. And that's a disaster when they're putting 35 or 40 foot heads on the front or wider because they can't spread residue. So figure out how wide your combine spreads residue and don't put a head on the front any wider because if you're no-tilling, you're really gonna struggle. So once you've got the residue management component figured out, figure out your drill. It takes a lot of ballast. This drill has 14 times 100 pound weights in the middle at the back, 14 times 100 pound weights in the middle at the front. It's got a stack of wafer weights here on the back, which is a good place to put it because the weight is transferred from back to front. It's got five 100 pound weights on the wing up front. And then it's got the markers that we don't use very often because we've got auto steer, but the markers are there for weight and weigh about four, four or 500 pounds. So once you get adequate ballast on the drill, you're gonna rotate the rock shaft backwards to compress this spring and you're gonna press that opener into the ground. So it also takes sharp discs, such as what we see in here. These are forged to no discs that are sharp, that stay sharper longer than most other brands or other brands that we've tested. So the combination of down pressure and sharp discs coupled to a good firming wheel and a good closing system is important to get these beans in the ground when it's pretty dry like this. We're getting the beans in the ground at least one and a half inches deep at this setting because there's moisture at one and a half inches deep and not much above that, okay? So ballast, down pressure is important. Lastly, we like the air carts simply because you've got a lot of capacity, okay? This cart uh, holds 270 bushels of seed and all that weight of seed is transferred from the cedar frame. So some people are buying like the 1990 CCS that holds 70 or 100 bushels of seed on the frame. We don't like those because that dynamic weight change of the seed weight from empty to full makes a massive difference to the performance of the drill or air seeder. So we really encourage the air carts simply because you're separating all that weight of seed from the toolbar. You can ballast the toolbar properly so it performs properly all the way across the cedar, regardless of how much the seed, how much seed there is in the air cart. So a few things here that are important when no-tilling soybeans into wheat stubble.